Alrighty, it is September 11th. I had a bit of a hard time focusing, kind of a um, not a happy day. So I decided to do well the second most American thing, other than work your ass off and uh, uh, snuck out to the range. In the afternoon, I had a couple hours uh, to kill before I pick up the kids. I am more or less ready for the long range uh, class I'm taking next week. So this is next week. So this is what I'm taking with me. Uh, that's my Fixin 308 Trash Panda Suppressor, uh, the Agitator 7 to 35. I was going to pop the um, Vortex Impact 4000 on this thing. I chose against it this time around. I don't think I'll need it for this class. And the way you know my stuff is all packaged, it's probably easier without it. Um, Sky Triple Pull uh, Bipod is going with me. Very, very impressed with this thing. And I have this pin size game changer bag. Uh, I was shooting some groups today, so I used it. Probably going to take the bag with me. It's pretty decent off of barricades and stuff like that. I don't know for sure uh, what they're going to do. In the class, I was testing a bunch of ammo. Again, kind of wrapping up and the most accurate uh, with the best um, and most consistent velocity turned out to be AAC uh, Precision 175 grain uh, open tip match right around 2700 foot per second out of my 24 inch proof barrel uh, extreme sped uh, I think 14 foot per second uh, so very very consistent well, generally all three AAC loads this is the 178 and 168 were quite consistent the precision 175 grain open tip match turned out to be the most consistent and at least at the 100 yards shot the best groups um, the other AC loads were just a hair under an MOA. The 175 my rifle liked a little bit more and that snuck in the but 0.6 MOA or so. I did not not super statistical, shot a couple of groups uh, to measure velocity. I um, uh, shot a group just to chrono uh, Hornady's super performance with 168 grain ELD match. This thing is fast at almost 2,900 foot per second, very close to it. It is a fast barrel. Uh, a little bit less accurate, about 1.1, 1.2 MOA, but you know, one group. I didn't spend too much time on it. I don't have a lot of this ammo, so for the uh, class I'm going to, this is not super critical. Uh, the IMI 175 grain open tip match ammo, the one they call the semi auto match. Relatively slow, soft recoil, about 2580 foot per second, not super accurate, about one and a half, 1.4 MOA out of my rifle. And I shot a few more groups <laughs> with fer uh, Federal's uh, center strike, golden, uh, uh, golden match something, Federal gold match ammunition, whatever it's called. But um, looking at the box, uh, I threw out the box, it doesn't say match king anywhere, it did the uh, for the center strike ammo, did Federal change bullets? It's some different open tip match. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if I got confused with the Federal's um, uh, ammo designations. So I'm going to order a bunch of this AC ammo to get delivered to where the match is happening in Wisconsin. And I'll order some more for my use at home. I'm quite impressed with it. As far as factory ammo goes, this is very, very good. Another thing I've been doing is what you can see behind me. Uh, this is my 458 Socom with a size 6126 on it and a Steiner C35 Gen 2 clip on. I'm basically trying to uh, get ready to go shoot pigs. Uh, last time I was in Texas to shoot a pig, I shot it with a 6.5 Grendel and the pig ran off. It died somewhere. I looked at the video, it was a good shot. But it did not um, did not put the pig down. So this time I'm going to take uh, 48 Socom with me because I'm not taking any more chances. Um, that should anchor the bloody thing in fairly good order. It's not a particularly peppy load that I'm shooting. It's a 350 grain bullet at about 1700 foot per second. So you know not, nothing crazy. Uh, but then an AR platform, it hits you. And so far, the Steiner C35 uh, Gen 2 is tolerating 458 Socom, well, probably better than my shoulder does. Um, so far, so good. I got it sighted in. User interface is fairly self-explanatory since I don't know what I did with the manual. 
I uh, kind of figured it out as I went along. I like the image quality. It's a very, very nice uh, compact clip-on, uh, simple controls, and I really like the way they set this up. Uh, front of a low power variable, only two rotary controls. This is basically magnification, and this, all the menus and stuff go through, it's a rotary knob. You can take a picture, record a video, uh, pressing the button and gets into the menus. So the controls are super simple as far as a user interface goes. This is probably the best of the thermals that I've seen or close to probably the best. I think it is the best. What I really like about this thing is how compact it, how compact it is. Uh, reaching the controls while you're behind the rifle is very straightforward. Um, the weight is relatively far back with something like a prismatic that would be shorter than a low power variable it might be even better i'm going to try it with a few different things and uh, uh, we'll see how it goes anyhow so that's basically that and uh, i'll let you guys uh, know how it goes i'm gonna do a couple of live streams very likely from wisconsin as i take the class to um uh, to share my impressions and see where the, we go with this. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, so Area 419 mount. Now it's official thing. This is my favorite uh, single piece mount on the market. Uh, today, couldn't be happier with it. Um, I have the bridge on it, so eventually I will uh, put the Impact 4000 on it when I come back from the class. Uh, the only other thing I've got sitting on the mount is the level that's coming in uh, very useful. And uh, this thing rotated on me. That happens. And that's that. That's my range report. I still oh I still owe you a video on the FX True Velocity Chronograph. I uh, love this thing, and I'll explain why when I go into details.